So I'm trying something new today and I just want to go over a quick bonding case. This patient came in with a broken uh, front tooth filling. You can see that the tooth is broken in a pretty big way, pretty noticeable when she smiles. And she also has a space or an embrasure space underneath the contact point of her front teeth that she wanted closed. Now in this particular case, the ideal treatment would be porcelain veneers to correct the shape, contour, and color of the teeth. But um, as we know, porcelain veneers can be a costly procedure. And in this particular case, the patient did not want to proceed with that right now. So we are trying to say get her back to having more confidence when she smiles and talks with people, especially before the uh, weekend begins. This tool right here is something that you see me use often on this channel. It's a micro etcher device or air abrasion therapy. It shoots aluminum oxide particles onto the tooth surface, um, which once again helps clean the surface really well and helps increase bone strength. The blue stuff that you see here is something called phosphoric acid etching. It is a chemical agent that demineralizes the outermost surface of the tooth. It um, is great for increasing the porosity of that tooth surface to allow the formation of resin tags when we apply our bonding agent. Bonding agent is applied over the entire tooth surface on the front and the back side of the tooth, as well as um, made thin by air so we don't have any pooling of the bonding agent, when, which can disrupt the bond strength. Whenever I'm working with fractures like this, I do like to start by preparing the lingual wall and creating the incisal edge before working on the front surface of the tooth. This is where it can get tricky because her teeth are already a little bit disoriented where one tooth is slanted sideways, one tooth is more forward than the other tooth. So it takes a bit of an eye to make sure that, you know, that we're just getting a natural looking result. And it is hard to do that, especially when you're trying to close gaps and things like that. Um, but with a little bit of time and energy, um, you are able to do that pretty well with composite resin. The next step would be to cut back the composite, shape it out a little bit, and we have a variety of discs that allow us to shape our composite, make it smooth, and make it look as natural as possible. In this case, we have to use our adjacent tooth as a guide to help us get that natural contour. a lot of time to make sure that the new filling isn't interfering with the patient's natural motions when they move side to side with their bite, front to back, protrusive, lateral protrusive movements. Make sure that the contact is being picked up by the adjacent teeth so that the filling doesn't chip again.
I hope this was an interesting video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next one.